What's up, people? Which is Matt. We're back at it again. All right, so you know my videos. I intentionally want to make you guys think. Right now, I'm leaving the Museum of Antiquia. That's the scenery you're seeing right here. It's really a historic art venue uh, featuring native artist Fernando Botero and Pedro Noel Gomez. Now, this, this uh, park right here with this museum is well known. However, people seem to forget that this is a historic area with a museum and a lot of different history going on. And I'm making this point on purpose, right? Because recently, within the last, I want to say three or four months, a new name and a supposed movement has popped up. Passport Brothers, no, or Passport Bros. Now, this first started originally, whether people want to claim it or not, or admit what it is, and kind of grew from really describing black people, black men who travel, right? No black men have always traveled, but for whatever reason, because of issues that has been going on in the United States, supposedly, or Western nations, People decided someone, I don't know who it, you know, maybe I can go back and trace it, but it might not matter um, where it started. Somebody, somebody coined that phrase, passport brother. And, you know, eventually a lot of people attach themselves to it, a lot of races, although I don't really see a lot of, um, you know, a lot of races claiming it necessarily. I know that there's a lot of races also. Originally, when I saw it popped up, my first instinct knowing the history of the United States and knowing the history of just Western society. Let's put it that way. I was concerned. What's up, folks? Rich's Method, back at it again. Uh, all right, so before we get started, don't forget to subscribe, like, yeah, like early, share. Go ahead and share this on Facebook or any other social medias. And uh, as we go through after you've checked out the video, be sure to drop a comment. Let me know what's on your mind. For anybody who has uh, done the super thanks, and for anybody who has done the cash app, I want to say thank you. I appreciate you. And also, guys, don't forget to go check out my ebooks and audio books on payhip.com slash riches method. All right? So, let's go. I was concerned people would call it a movement, or they started to call it a movement. I was concerned about a label. Um, I'll put some screenshots up here. Showing you guys at some point here what I said about two or three months ago as well as just only two weeks ago. My main concern, knowing the history of the United States especially, is that anytime you give something a name, it can be targeted. Now, recently there's a particular YouTuber um, who's been more in the news for it. And some people try to claim that he's the leader of it. I don't know if that's actually true. I don't think there is a leader. And even he said that. doesn't matter who he is necessarily. I always look at things from a bigger picture. So originally when this term popped up, that is exactly how I saw it, from a bigger picture. My concern was anytime you give something a name and call it a movement, first you give it a name, then people call it a movement, but then what happens is disinformation and targeting. And that was my concern. The United States has and England and Britain has a long history of misinformation. Anybody who's been in the military would know, or, you know, clandestine services would know that there's something called information warfare. And literally, it's been studied for hundreds of years, it's been implemented, and it's a way of dissuading people using different tactics, mostly information, and bending or twisting to label things that people think um, might be too strong or lead to economic issues that they don't want and turn it around in the public side. So what has happened because of this is a big fallout. People were able to say, okay, we think we found the leader. 
And then they were able to say, okay, it has a name, so it's a movement. And now I'm going to target it and say these particular things about it to dissuade people from doing something else. Basically, misdirection. And people have traveled forever for culture. People travel for the reasons that this this, this uh, movement, so-called movement, is being targeted for. People travel for a combination of reasons. But now what's happening is you're able to attach a negative connotation to a particular thing. And now you have, as you see in my screenshots, my concern was there'll be people who need a particular outlet of travel. But because it's now labeled especially among the people who look a certain way, that certain people who need it will be dissuaded. They'll be put off because they now have a perception of what this particular action of getting your passport to experience culture, food, a different way of living, seeing a different economy, seeing your possibilities within that economy and uh, and those economies and a certain amount of happiness will bring you are now looking at a tiny portion and saying ah this is what it's about if i do that i'm concerned what the people in my lives my loved ones my family members what they'll say about me what women will say about me what, what the women's right movements might say about me and young especially younger people who really should experience the world from a different perspective that look a certain way might not do that anymore now we all know that when you live in the united states you see a lot of uh, um, caucasians who come out of school or before they start college they say because they have more wealth my parents are sending me to do study abroad or my parents are sending I am going to backpack around the world for a couple of years and then come back and then finish college or when they finish college they're gonna backpack around the world right before they go ahead and uh, jump into the work economy and work till they're 65 so they can say they experienced the world so they can say that they grew and before you know it, they're just called backpackers. But the moment people of a certain, potentially certain uh, persuasion, decide that they're going to go ahead and do something similar, but at any age, for many different reasons. Now, those same people who are backpacking around the world, those same uh, older Caucasian gentlemen who are going, who are going to Thailand and Vietnam, and you know, after the Vietnam era, lots of people started traveling even more to Vietnam. Uh, because they they originally did it in the military, they 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 were not labeled with a negative connotation, right? Uh, after World War II, I think it was you had a lot of uh, men who brought back Japanese wives, right? They were not labeled necessarily with a negative connotation. Now, my my point is that what I'm seeing here is similar to what happened with the Black Panther movement to me. Now, I'm not saying that. The, the Passport Brothers movement is like Black Panthers at all. What I'm saying is the way that it was targeted by the FBI, uh, which is now proven there's documents that were released about that, um, to dismantle or similar tactics using some of the people of that similar population, by the way, who looked the same, who were implanted into those organizations. Same thing with Malcolm X. My concern was that a similar kind of mentality and thinking and dissuasion would be used. And I think that is the ultimate fallout that my concern has come to pass. You guys drop a comment below, tell me what you think. And uh, keep it, of course, respectful to each other as well as to me. And I'll check you guys on the next one. All right, folks, with that said, Rich is Metal, signing out. Don't forget to uh, subscribe, drop that like. Share this, please, on Facebook and the other social media platforms for anyone you think it will be important to and will help them. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.